Good morning and welcome to Peace Out, where we are all learning together to peace out, right? I know I'm learning. Pray we don't have to go to the hospital today. <laughs> so that's, that's what I'm praying today. So I'm still in the story of Jacob this week, though. And I'm still hanging out there because I just have read, I don't know how many times I've read it in a lot, just, just this week. And I think this morning, now I went back and revisited it one more time. It, it, I thought of the part where it says that the man wrestled and it says Jacob wouldn't let him go. And the dude, the angel, the messenger from God, it says man, in some translations, angels in some, in some, it said, it says he, um, he said, let me go. <laughs> the sun's coming up. I got to go. Right. And Jacob said, no, I am not letting you go until you bless me. I'm not letting you go. And then, then that's when the, the messenger, the man, the angel said, uh, he said, well, who, you know, what's your name? And you're no longer Israel. And God saw you when this happened. And now you're, or you're no longer Jacob, now you're Israel. And, you know, you're going to go. Blah, blah, blah. But he didn't let go. Even when the man said, let me go. I got to go, man. We've been fighting all night long, right? He said, I'm changing your name to Israel because you fought with God and or struggled, I should say. We talked yesterday about struggling with the faith and, and keeping that faith and staying in that faith even when it's hard, right? And just being determined to hold on to that. So that made me think of another scripture that that uh, I actually wrote a little song about a little bit because there's a scripture in Isaiah 64, it's verse 7, and that he's, he's talking about uh, how he's, he's kind of, he, he starts the Isaiah 64 saying, you know, would you would just, just shake the heavens and come down to us, right? Shake the mountains and uh, come down and let us see your awesome works again, basically. And then he's, he says, you know, he says, is there no one in verse seven that calls on your name, right? Is there no one who, the second part of the verse says, stirs himself up to take hold of you? And so I started thinking about that, how, you know, sometimes it's a lot of work. I mean, Jacob wrestled all night long. All night long, he was in that fight to hold on to that angel, that messenger of God, that, that man God's in, however you want to interpret that. He was in that fight all night long to hold on. And he said, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. I'm not letting you go. And, and that's a fight. It wasn't an easy thing. There wasn't a button. Like there's not a peace out button, right? There wasn't a button that he could just push and go, all right, got that blessing. Let's go on. He didn't confess 900 scriptures. He he just said, I'm holding on. And he physically fought until he got the blessing he wanted, right? And so I and then so I mean, think of the scripture in Isaiah. The, the question is, is there anyone who will stir themselves up or or be determined, maybe I should say, to just take hold of God and not let go until we get what we need. Some days that's just pure and simple peace, right? A lot of days it's just pure and simple peace, but we don't quit. We don't say, well, I don't really feel peace right now, so I guess God didn't give me any, or you know, he hasn't answered this prayer, he hasn't answered that prayer, he hasn't that this or that or something else. And we just walk off going, well, God just didn't, whatever, you know. But what if we became more like Jacob and saying, God, I'm, I don't have this thing figured out yet. I don't know how this thing's supposed to work. I, I haven't figured out yet how to get that peace. I know you gave it to me, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stop until I figure it out. I'm not gonna quit until I figure it out. Right? What if we just did that? What if we just determined that we're gonna get in this word until we find a scripture today that just hits us in the heart? Don't camp there, right? Maybe it's something in the Psalms, maybe you need comfort. It's it's in here. Maybe it's something, uh maybe there's Maybe there's something out of the, you know, the New Testament somewhere that you, you need to just be reminded that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. And hold on to that all day. And I, so I started thinking about how Jacob held on to this angel. He said, I'm not letting you go. And he fought to hold on to what he wanted, right? Which is what we're talking about here in Isaiah 6, 64, 7. I want to fight to take hold of God just to take hold of God and what he's promised me. So I thought about J Joseph sitting in the prison all those years. Did he have, now he didn't have a physical fight to hold onto an angel or a messenger of God. There wasn't a physical fight, but you know there had to be a fight in his soul 
to keep that pen. And in his mental health, he's sitting in a prison for something he didn't do. He has this promise of God, but he's in that in-between that we talked about earlier. There's that in-between where I know God said, but I don't see. And that's the hard part. That's the struggle part. Now, I know God said I have peace, but I don't feel it right now. That's the struggle part, the in-between part. That's where we have to dig in just a little bit deeper and go, I'm not letting go, God. I, until I understand you gave me peace and I feel that peace, I'm not letting go until I get what you promised, right? And then I thought of Paul and Silas in, in Acts 16, and they were in prison too, and they had been beaten for preaching the gospel. They were in, in chains. They were chained to the wall. Their feet were chained. They, were, they had been beaten, and they were, it was midnight, so you know it was dark. They had extra guards on them. And what did they do? They didn't say, oh, God failed us. I would, we would never be here if God didn't fail us. No, they started singing praises to God in their in-between spot. They were, and they counted themselves worthy to be, to suffer for the gospel. They, they, were, they didn't take the beating and make themselves victims, even though they were victimized, right? And, and traumatized. They didn't say, oh no, no, I don't know what we're gonna do. They just went, you know what? God didn't change because I'm in this prison cell. God didn't change because Jacob was in the wilderness going between Laban back to Esau and worried about how the out, what the outcome was going to be. God didn't change because Joseph was sitting in the prison all those years waiting for the promise. God didn't change all those years. Saul was chasing David, trying to kill him because God had anointed him as the next king. And that in-between spot, it's those in-between spots that gets us. But these, that's three really good examples of people who were in those in-between spots. And they just said, actually four, right? Because we've got Joseph in the prison in between the promise and, and the palace. We've got Jacob with the promise in between Laban going back to Esau, not knowing. And he had done wrong. He, he knew, right? And so he was in between. We've got Paul and Silas in the prison in between preaching the gospel and getting out. But they don't know that yet, right? And then what was, so it's Jacob. Oh, and then David in between the promise of being king and, and actually getting on that throne and, and reigning as king. And he's got Saul pursuing him. That's four great examples of in between where they said, I'm going to hold on to God. I don't, I know what it looks like. It looks bleak. It looks dark. It looks heavy. Everything in my life feels broken. I've said that a lot of times. Oh, a lot of times. It's all broke. <laughs> Nothing's working. <laughs> and usually it's when something really little breaks and I'm already on full full tilt, right? And it's like, oh, nothing works. You know? And you get in those in-between times. And that's the time not to just go, you know what, just forget it all. I didn't push the right button. God's formula doesn't work. Well, there's not a formula, right? There is a fight, but there's not a formula. I mean, those in-between places where you can just stop and go, you know what? I'm just going to hold on to what he said. I'm just gonna hold on to what he said, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, no matter if I'm sitting in a dark prison, if we're not doing anything, if I'm going back to somewhere where I know I wronged someone like Jacob, or if I'm David just waiting for the promise of God, you know, it doesn't matter. So that's four really good examples of people in those in-between spots and just they thought through and said, I'm still going to trust you today, God, period. And that's what faith is all about. It's not about confessing things away, although I'm a big proponent of, of your positive confession and, and watching your words and things like that. I'm for that, right? I'm, I think there's power in that. I definitely do. You know, we, uh, we know we want to watch our words and things like that. And but, but, I, but faith isn't about just saying the right thing. What if you say the wrong thing? What if you get the wrong adjective in there? What if you in, put the inflection on the wrong word and God goes, well, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> there's no There's no formula. It's just that, that fight of I'm in between the promise and its fulfillment, the what God said, or I'm in between total peace and no peace at all, <laughs> or I'm in between, I'm, I'm in a sandwich, but I'm going to keep on keeping on trusting God because he said. And these all of these examples did that. They took hold of God until they got what they knew he had already given them right? And so today, my encouragement is this. Don't stop. If it's a fight, that's actually a good sign. It's actually a good sign because Jacob was like, I know you can bless me and you ain't going nowhere until you bless me. So it's a good sign. The fight was a good thing. And we try to stay out of fights. We don't want to be confrontational. We don't, shouldn't be picking fights, right? But 
we try to, I try to not be confrontational or, or contra, yeah, just argue, argumentative maybe is a better term. You know, I try not to do these kind of, get in conflicts on purpose, but sometimes life brings that conflict to us. And sometimes the fact that we're trusting God in a hard situation brings conflict in our soul because we know what he said, but we don't feel it. We know what he said, but we ain't got it yet. We know what he said. We know what he promised. Peace. But I ain't got none. It's okay. I that thing through. Hold on to the scripture. Pick a piece of scripture. I got a whole bunch of them. I don't know what this. I got a whole bunch of them gathered up, right? In a peace out book that it is all about scriptures that are uh, the peace out scriptures. And I don't know what But <laughs> I've got, find one. Isaiah 26, 3. I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. But there's the fight again. I got to keep my mind on God. The unchanging, faithful God who promised us peace, right? I have to keep my mind on that. There's that fight because I, I got all this stuff coming at me. I got life coming at me. I got Chris coughing his head off all night long. I've got this. I've got that. And, I, and then that in between is the fight to so hold on and go, I know God gave this and I'm going to figure it out, <laughs> right? So my encouragement today is just keep on keeping on this. The, the fact that there's a fight is the is proof enough for me that that peace is there to obtain. I just gotta fight through this head and fight through these feelings to get to what God said, right? And that's the fight. The fight's a good thing because you get stronger and you're gonna get that blessing. It just takes a process sometimes to get to that other side. So keep on keeping on. Peace out. I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a great day.